While we all love the thrill of killing weeds, it's important to understand some of the principles behind weed science and weed control. Today we're going to talk about various types of strategies including prevention strategies as well as understanding the biology of annual plants and their seed banks and perennial plants and the way they move carbohydrates through their system and how that might impact timing of different weed control strategies. My name is Joe DiTomaso and I'm a Cooperative Extension Specialist here at the UC Davis campus. Today we've assembled an outstanding group of wheat scientists from the campus to talk about the various types of principles that are critical to effective weed management. So let's start by talking about prevention strategies. Hi, I'm Brad Hansen. I'm a weed specialist with UC Davis. I'm going to talk today about keeping weeds out of your home landscape and garden. Weeds can come into the landscape in a variety of, from a variety of sources. One source could be with planting material from the nursery. For example, I've got two uh, one-gallon containers in front of me um, that came from a local nursery. The uh, bottle brush actually has uh, spotted spurge in it, and the rosemary is loaded up with annual bluegrass and hairy bittercress. Now, if you put those into your landscape, those, those plants are going to continue to grow, and if you don't remove them, they'll set seed and continue to cause you problems. Other weeds that are common in the nursery may not present much of a problem in the home landscape, such as this bittercress, which typically is a greenhouse problem, but not really a landscape problem. On the other hand, a weed like spotted spurge will likely continue to set seed and perpetuate itself as a problem in future seasons. Besides bringing weeds in with new plants, we can also bring weeds in with other sources of inoculum, including potting media, topsoil additions, or compost. Now the potting media that I'm using here actually is a sterile potting media that's been stored under cover and dry. It probably has a very low incidence of weed seed. However, other less uh, carefully handled material like topsoil could be highly infested with weed seeds. Organic waste like compost, yard waste, and, the, and similar products could also be highly infested with weed seed. Um, composted material in particular can be a, a real problem. Weed seeds, for, for compost to be relatively weed free, for example, many weed seeds will survive in compost that, that doesn't reach temperatures of at least 145 Fahrenheit. And really, to be much more certain that the compost is relatively weed free, that soil should reach at least 158 Fahrenheit. Even, even compost reaching those temperatures, however, could still have some weed seeds, such as, uh, such as malva, California burr clover, and oxalis seed, which are resistant to higher temperatures than some other weed seeds. Animal waste, composted or uncomposted, can also be a source of weed seed inoculum. Uh, if those animals are fed weedy feed or hay, some of those weed seeds could pass through the animal undigested and will remain viable. And if you put uncomposted manure in your garden, you may br be bringing in weed seed with that. Another area for weed seed sanitation in the home landscape is to make sure that your tools are free of soil and plant debris that could contain weed seed. Let's walk over to the tool shed and take a look at some examples. Power tools and hand tools used in the home landscape can be another source of potential weed seed introduction into the home landscape. For example, this garden hoe is covered with soil that could, could contain weed seeds. If this was brought into your landscape from another landscape, you could be introducing a new, a totally different weed problem. An even larger problem is motorized implements like rototillers, lawnmowers, and, and similar machines that, that have a lot of areas where weed, weed seed, weed propagules, soil, and other plant material can be transported between sites. The issue of moving seeds around your landscape is probably not as important as the issue of bringing in weeds or weed seed propagules from other areas. If you loan or borrow tools or have commercial operators come in, make sure that those tools are clean before they're used in your landscape. The final comment I want to make about preventing weeds in the home landscape through sanitation is to control weeds in border areas and areas outside your garden or landscape. By, preventing, by controlling weeds before they set seed in these areas, you'll reduce the amount of seed that's introduced in your landscape and garden that will produce weeds that you have to control later. For example, we're standing next to a horse corral that's infested with 
many different weed species. If those weeds are allowed to mature and set seed, they'll probably, many of those seeds could move into our landscape and we'd have to control them at that point. By controlling those weeds before they set seed, we'll minimize our future problems in, in our managed landscape area or in, in a garden. Therefore, it's really critical to control the weeds all around the landscape, not just in, in the landscape. In this segment, we discuss the four main sources of weed seed introductions for gardeners. And this includes weeds and seeds introduced from nursery plants, topsoil amendments, contaminated tools and equipment, and weedy borders that surround gardens.